Welcome to lesson 10 and the last lesson of the GAMS training. In this last lesson, the objective is to introduce the user to modeling mixed complementarity problems in GAMS. A mixed complementarity problem, or MCP, is a type of problem solving a system of equations which contains equality and inequalities constraints and requires a one-to-one -one complementarity between the equations, in which at least one equation must hold with equality. Express another way, the variable is non-zero if the associated constraint is strictly binding, the variable is zero if the associated constraint is non-binding. Typically, bounds must be respected as well on some variables. To solve this type of problems, we use the path solver, and we refer the user to the documentation available in GAMS IDE help menu for a complete description on MCPs. The user can download path PDF by selecting in the help menu, documents and solvers. Also, the McCall User's Guide provides an overview. Some of the following slides are based on this guide. Mathematically, we can express an MCP in the following manner. We want to solve for a set of variables zi given the following conditions. The function fi of z is equal to zero, when the value of z is between a lower bound li and an upper bound ui. Or, the function fi of z is positive or equal to zero when zi reaches its lower bound. Or, the function fi of z is negative or equal to zero when zi reaches its upper bound. Where fi is a function and li and ui are respectively lower and upper bounds of variable zi. A familiar example of MCP can be found in the complementary relationship between the binding nature of the constraints in a problem and the associated dual multipliers or variable. If a constraint is not binding, then its dual multiplier must be zero at bound. If a dual multiplier is non-zero, the associated constraint must be binding. In fact, the Kahn-Karouche-Tucker conditions, or theoretical conditions that characterize many model types in economics, especially in the general equilibrium class, can be expressed as an MCP. We will illustrate with examples in the following slides. For example, suppose we impose a quota Q on imports denoted by IM. So two possibilities. If the quota is constraining, it will give rise to a rent. Conversely, if the quota is not binding, meaning imports are lower than the quota, the rent is zero. So in mathematical terms, we can write either the quota is binding, meaning imports are equal to the quota, in that case the rent is positive, or the quota is not binding, actual imports are below the quota, and in that case the rent is zero. Another example of MCP programming is the imposition of a minimum wage. If the minimum wage is binding, then at that rate, the labor market equilibrium will generate an excess supply of labor or an employment. If the minimum wage is not binding, then the labor market clears and unemployment is zero. So in mathematical terms, when the labor market clears at a wage rate lower than the minimum wage, the wage rate must be set to the minimum wage and unemployment is positive or zero. 
when the labor market clears at a wage rate higher than the minimum wage, the constraint is not binding and unemployment is equal to zero. As you may be aware by now, these types of constraints clearly differ from what we have seen so far. For GAMS, they represent also another type of problem. And while most of the code is similar to non-MCP programs, a few additional commands are required to solve an MCP. So in the rest of this lesson, we will cover both the mathematical structure and the GAMS code of an example of a mixed complementarity problem. First, we will cover the mathematical structure. To illustrate, we use the CGE model developed in Lesson 8, but we impose the minimum wage on the economy. The mathematical structure is similar to the one seen in Lesson 8, and we first review some of its specifications. As you recall, the production technology is represented by a Cobb-Douglas function, where y is equal to a, a constant, times capital demand KD raised to the power alpha, times labor demand LD raised to the power 1 minus alpha, where Y is national production or supply, A is a scale parameter, alpha is an elasticity, KD and LD are the factors demand. We derive factor demands from the first-order conditions of a cost minimization problem subject to output Y. So we get the labor demand and the capital demand, where P is the price of the commodity, W is the remuneration of labor, and R the remuneration of capital. So national income and total consumption or demand are given by equation INC and C. INC is equal to W times LD plus R times KS. And C is equal to INC over P, where INC is national income, C is national consumption or demand. But note a slight difference. Because of potential unemployment, total labor demand may not differ from labor supply. So in the income equation, we must use LD, the actual number of people employed, instead of LS. Similarly to the model in Lesson 8, equilibrium conditions must be satisfied on the commodity and capital markets where Ks is capital supply. It is exogenous and equal to 3,000 units. But on the labor market, imposing a minimum wage rate, which we denote by W0, may generate unemployment, which we denote by U. We can express the new condition by the wage rate must be greater than the minimum wage. And unemployment is a difference between labor supply and labor demand. In addition, U cannot be negative or labor demand cannot exceed labor supply. Finally, if the minimum wage is not binding, then labor supply equals labor demand and there is no unemployment. Conversely, if the minimum wage is binding, then there may be unemployment. Mathematically, we can express these two possibilities in a single equation. If one of the terms of the multiplication is positive, the other terms must be equal to zero for this equation to stand. So if the wage rate is greater than the minimum wage, meaning this difference is positive, then unemployment must be equal to zero, meaning the labor market clears. On the other hand, if the minimum wage is binding, then the wage rate is equal to the minimum wage, 
the second term is equal to zero, and unemployment can be positive. We now write the problem in GAMS code. We use the same program structure as in Lesson 8, meaning we have four main parts, calibration, model, initialization, and resolution. The calibration part is identical. The parameters are the same. The definition is the same. The calibration process is also the same. Parameter are initialized in the same way. Remember that we add a zero to all parameters and variables names to indicate their benchmark values. But now we must add a new variable to the list of variables, and employment. We also need to define our equations a bit differently to account for the new constraints. The first three equations are exactly the same as they were in Lesson 8. The income equation is the same, but now LD must appear in the computation of income instead of LS. The consumption equation and the commodity equilibrium equation are also the same as they were in Lesson 8. Now you will notice that we reintroduce the equilibrium equation for the capital market. If you recall in Lesson 8, we removed it because of Walras law. But one of the requirements of MCP is that each variable must be paired with a specific equation. Given that the price of capital R is determined by the capital market equilibrium, the equation must be defined. We define the unemployment equation, which says simply that the unemployment U is the difference between labor supply, LS, and labor demand, LD. Finally, we must include the constraint generated by imposing a minimum wage. The equation states that the wage rate must be greater or equal to the minimum wage, W0. Note that this is expressed by the operator equal g equal. The initialization is also similar. The only changes are setting the lower bound on unemployment, which is zero since unemployment cannot be negative, and the upper bound on labor demand, which cannot exceed labor supply. The resolution part is probably the one that differs the most from the examples we have seen so far. As we have mentioned previously, solving a model using MCP solver requires the user to map each equation to its complementary variable. Unless all the equations in the model are strict equalities, so there are no equations of the form equal g equal or equal l equal. In this case, if the user wanted to include all the equations in the model, he or she could use the slash all slash notation in the solve statement. This is what we have done so far. But in our MCP example, since one of the equation uses the equal g equal relationship for wage, we must map each equation to the corresponding variable. So we now proceed to map each equation with the corresponding variable in our example. In some instance, the mapping is straightforward because the variable appears explicitly in the equation. So the production variable y is a complementary variable in the production equation y. The labor demand variable LD is a complementary variable for labor demand equation LD. The capital demand variable KD is a complementary variable for the capital demand equation KD. The income variable 
inc is the complementary variable for income equation inc. The consumption variable c is a complementary variable for demand equation c. Note that in the equilibrium equations, the variable does not appear explicitly, but is determined by market clearing conditions. The commodity price variable P is a complementary variable for the equilibrium equation P of the commodity market. The same applies to the capital remuneration variable R. It is a complementary variable for the equilibrium equation for the capital market. A new unemployment variable U is a complementary variable for the equilibrium equation for the labor market. The labor remuneration variable W is a complementary variable for the constraint equation W. In the GAMS code, these relationships are expressed as follows. The model statement is followed by the name of the model and explanatory text, which is optional. The syntax for the mapping is as follows. The name of the equation followed by the name of the complementary variable, both separated by a dot. Pairs equation variable must be separated by an end of line or a comma. All the pairs listed are enclosed between slashes. There should be exactly as many endogenous variables as there are equations. Each endogenous variable must be specified as being complementary with one and only one equation. The solve statement is followed by the name of the model, the keyword using, and the solver MCP. Run the model in GAMS ID. At this point, you should obtain the exact same results as in Lesson 8. Why? Because in this first run, we set the minimum wage to the benchmark value for the wage rate, which is 1. If you recall, the calibration ensures that in the absence of a shock, the solutions to the model reproduce the benchmark values. So the minimum wage does not impose a binding constraint, at least in the absence of the shock. As a simulation, we could set the minimum wage at a higher level. This should translate into an employment. We now conclude Lesson 10 of the GAMS training, and we come to the end of the training. And for your assignment, write the GAMS code as specified in the previous slides, Verify that the solution without shock is the same as it was in Lesson 8. Set the minimum wage at 10% higher than the benchmark value and verify that you get an employment greater than zero.